Hi everyone, welcome back. Got a pretty exciting video today. Uh, exciting for me anyway, because I'm getting a storage battery installed. Yes, I alluded to it uh, a few days ago or a few weeks ago in another video that uh, I have a new component going in in my solar solution here at home, and that is a storage battery. But we'll get onto the detail of that in just a moment. First, I wanted to say, yeah, all this coronavirus stuff is it's alarming. It's worrying. It's it's life changing, isn't it? And I think you've got to take it seriously. So with that in mind, I have decided to start to distance myself from people in a sensible way. Not um, hiding indoors completely, but also if I don't have to go out, if it's not essential and it's not in the safest environments, I'm not going to do it. So I have this week cancelled two EV test drives in that I did not want to go to a showroom with 10, 20, 30 people around in a car that's been used by multiple people. It just didn't make sense to do that. So I've cancelled those, but I'm going to carry on using local tradespeople. I've got a few tradespeople through into the house this week, and I'm going to be sensible and keep my distance from them just in case I either infect them or they infect me. I don't have any symptoms, but that's the whole point, isn't it? We don't quite know whether we have got it or whether we haven't. So let's all just be sensible and let's all just be safe is what I say. Today I'm carrying on though with the home storage battery and Christian from Power Driffin is here. He's helping me install it. Well, he is doing the installation, but we're, we're helping each other. And what's actually happened is Christian from Power Driffin um, installed my solar panels in September last year and we've uh, struck up a relationship since then. Um, He's seen the videos that I do and the analysis that I do of um, energy usage at home and would like me to test a battery for him or maybe more than a battery. So I've agreed to do that. Um, I'm extremely happy to do that because I love data, I love the analysis and I'm looking at home storage battery anyway. So it, I get to try the battery that perhaps I'm interested in. I've been looking for quite a while now at storage batteries and I'll confess I find it very very difficult because most of them don't do what I actually want. There seems to be the difference of um, older batteries that come and just plug into your AC system and you leave them alone and they just work and you don't get a lot of control over them or interface with them. And I guess if it's a cheaper solution that's what you might expect but as newer solutions come out I think customers expect more and they need more configurability, they need more control of the device for things like importing from the grid on cheaper hours and also for connecting up to virtual power stations in the future and having time of charge solutions either with the grid integrating to zappies and eddies. There's, there's a whole host of potential for the future and you need, I think, an interface that allows you the scope to use those things now or in the future. So that's what I've been looking for. One of the challenges that I've faced in my discussions and thoughts about a um, home storage battery is the Tesla Powerwall. And although it's the easy solution because you can choose that, you know it's software upgradable, you know it's reliable, um, you know you get a big storage battery, 13 and a half kilowatt hours, and you hear online especially that it's good value for money price per kilowatt hour. Frankly, I'm not so convinced that that is good value um, because there are two aspects that I want from a home storage battery that Tesla doesn't provide. One is upgradability. Um, with the power wall, you can double its size, you can add another power wall, so from 13 and a half to 26, 27 kilowatt hours, but you can't add it in two or four or six kilowatt hour gradient. So deciding how big a battery you need is, I'll just have that one, then it's plenty big enough. And But it might be bigger than you need, um, or you might want to expand afterwards. So for me, the power wall isn't as granular and isn't as upgradable as I would like. The other thing is the price. The price, you know, you look at some videos and they talk about the power wall being five and a half thousand dollars. So you have this perception that it'll be four and a half thousand pounds or something like that. And yes, that's an old price for the older battery, perhaps, and the price of the battery has gone up. But also here in the UK, it's not a direct dollar to pound comparable. It's actually as expensive. So to get the power wall two installed here, which has to be with the gateway, it's £10,800. It's over 10000 with just about any installer. And that's a heck of a lot of money, even for a 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery. So I've been researching things like the Pylon Tech batteries, which are a much cheaper Chinese brand battery. Um, they come in modular sizes of either 2.4 kilowatt hours or 3 kilowatt hours. 
and I've been looking at adding to that a hybrid inverter that provides the intelligence, the interface that I need. So each battery on the Pylon Tech side comes with its own battery management system and that manages the voltages and the spread of power across the batteries. So that's all good. But then the inverter provides the interface for timed charging from overnight, for visibility and monitoring, those sort of things. So I've been looking at something like the Lux um, inverter going with Pylon Tech batteries. And that was where I was until I saw this device, the Pure Drive device. This is a um, all-in-one solution, just like the Powerwall. So the inverter's inside the box along with the battery storage. It's a UK built, UK manufactured, UK company. It's, I would say, new to the market, but it's new to me in the market. Um, they've been around a little while and they do both commercial and residential, but I don't think they're that well known. And what I liked about this solution is the software interface. It does look like it provides all the data I want, all the graphs I want, and all the controllability that I want in a very easy fashion. So this Pure Drive solution actually came about at a very good time because I'd only just seen that the interface looks really good. It's rumored to be um, very, very affordable. There are price drops on the way for battery storage, apparently. And, and it comes along with the hybrid inverter all built in. So, so far, this looks like a real contender for me. So I'm extremely grateful to Christian from Power Driven for helping me get to evaluate it. The battery that's being installed today is five kilowatt hours or perhaps even 4.8. Um, but what I can see from inside the pure drive cabinet, it's all in one. The inverter in there is actually a Victron inverter. So it's a really well known good make as well. So this is looking like a good robust solution. One box, just like the Tesla Powerwall, plus it looks upgradable. So it looks like we can add batteries to it or add them in stages of five kilowatt hours potentially. And I have seen them um, look at offering both the five and the 10 kilowatt hour variants. How this integrates into my existing solution, that I guess is more on a data level because other than that, it's going to be standalone. It's going to integrate into my AC power supply and the intelligence that's there in the box will determine whether to provide power into my home or whether to take power out of the home that's been provided by the solar panels that I have. It'll have two CT clips connected to it. So one will be for the import and export on the house consumption and the other will be for knowledge of what's going on on my solar arrays. And then of course I'll have to add another CT clip to the My Energy solution that I have so that the Eddie and Zappy that's here and the hub and app and all those sort of things, they're aware that I have a battery storage solution as well. I'm going to find this test and review very, very interesting because in my research and my thoughts, I was starting to think a 10 kilowatt hour plus solution, 10, 11, 12 would actually suit my requirements, but not at a 10,000 pound price. So it'll be interesting to see what we find price wise, because I do not know yet how expensive this pure drive solution is. And also we'll find out what my usage is like. Now, the reason why I think I needed a 10 kilowatt hour solution is because I only really need two or three kilowatt hours a day, maybe four tops to so take away the depth of discharge of the battery. Um, maybe I need a three or four kilowatt hour battery and that provides enough energy to keep me not using the grid for most of the day, most of the year. What it doesn't provide me is that flexibility in that the bigger the battery you have, so if I double the size of this pure drive solution up to 9.6 or 10, whichever it is, then you do get more throughput, you do get more power. But equally, in the winter time, from when I've had a sunny day, what I want really is to be able to store enough energy on a good day to last two or three days. So although that's not gonna happen many times a year, I would still ideally like that solution to be able to last two or three days with the energy that I've charged into the battery, not just one. So it'll be interesting to see whether I think after I've tested this battery, whether now I only need a five kilowatt hour battery or yep, I was right, I think I need a little bit more. And that again will depend on price, I suppose, because if we're talking a, um, a sensible price to upgrade from the five kilowatt hour to the 10 kilowatt hour, then it just really makes sense to do it. More, more is better. And the same for how I feel about the Kona Electric having 64 kilowatt hours. 300 mile range and 64 kilowatt hours is absolutely fantastic, but I wouldn't say no to 74 kilowatt hours. Um, more is, bat is better. It gives me more space to store more energy, gives me more flexibility, means I don't have to charge as much out. It just makes your experience of the electric car and the home battery solution better if you've got more storage. So it's less of a compromise. 
So that's all for now. Um, I need to get back and find out what's actually going on with the install because it's happening right now. And uh, more videos to come, hopefully, as I learn more about the solution. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope you find this video useful and the ones to come, of course. And fingers crossed, the price is affordable. See you again soon. Bye-bye for now.